Okay, hello everyone, and welcome back to Sprocket, and you'll see why I'm showing you a panther in a minute. Um, <coughs> and I'm going to be showing you the latest tank line I've been working on, which is a line, uh, a German tank line. Um, and this is the panther. The panther is a tank that you get at the beginning of the uh, game if you create a new faction and choose to have uh, the starting blueprints already there. And uh, you can also fight against it in a couple of the scenarios. Um, but yeah, here is the Panther, um, as as provided. Um, 100 millimeters of frontal armor, sloped, 75 side, uh, 100 frontal turret, and uh, 50 side rear. Um, 50 side, sorry, 30 rear. And uh, yeah, this is this is just your normal Panther. Has a, uh, a 21 and a half liter, a uh, 23.4 liter uh, V12, sorry. And uh, it has a 75mm gun with 147mm uh, of penetration for a mid or medium tank. Which, uh, you know, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's alright. Um, it's just your standard panther sort of affair. Um, and we can, uh, we, can, we can adjust the gun as, as is. Oh, there you go, there's a bit of lag there, but yeah, it reloads in about 9 ish seconds. <coughs> Which, uh, you know, it's fairly slow for a uh, for a 75 mm gun but uh, nevertheless that is uh, that is the panther that's in the game um, and that's because it's got absolutely no turret armor that's uh, turret ammo that's why um, but yes that's the base panther so now I will show you this thing it is the uh, Sonderkraftfahrzeug 170 Ausführung A and uh, you will see some notable similarities between the two. <laughs> it's a smaller knockoff panther, and uh, I haven't got a, a name for it yet, so if you do have a name for this which isn't used by any of the other German big cats or, or just tanks in general of the war, please suggest it in the comments and I'll see if I, uh, see if I find one that I like. Um, but yes, so this is the uh, 170. The real panther, by the way, is Sonderkraftfahrzeug 171. So, yeah even more so leaning towards knockoff panther material there. Um, but yeah, here it is. Interleaved road wheels. Um, it has got a very good 75mm gun actually for a mid-war tank. 160mm of penetration, which is uh, quite a lot. Um, mobility wise, 8 litre V10. Uh, and armour wise here, we've got uh, 50, uh, sorry, 70 mils of uh, frontal armour here at a 40-ish you know, degree slope and uh, 50 degrees of lower glacis armour. 40mm of side armour, and the same for the turret uh, as well, 20mm rear armour for all of them. So that is the uh, standard uh, Ausfrung A, not Panther. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's an alright tank, 6, 7-ish second reload time, which uh, is better than the regular Panther here. And uh, if, we can, if we can aim at it. And we can punch right through that, right through that side armor. So, yeah, it's a pretty decent medium tank mobility-wise. It's it's a little bit you know, 17 miles an hour, which is not not all too slow, uh, comparable to a cruiser tank, for example. Um, and it doesn't turn very well. It has got uh, it has got twin transmission here, and you know it is the first issued version of the. Uh, of the tank to the Panzer Corps, and uh, it's in the German Panzer Grau, and it's got you know German crosses on it and all that uh, German style, uh, or well just just German exhaust right there, and five man crew. Now the next major revision of this tank was the Ausführung C, uh, as you can see, changes from twin transmission to clutch braking, which makes it easier to drive and turn. The engine has been upgraded to a 9-litre V10 engine. It's still got a 75mm with 160mm of penetration. It is a mid-war tank still, uh, but the armour generally has just been upgraded. 85mm uh, of frontal sloped, 85mm uh, of frontal turret armour as well. Still 50mm of lower glacis armour, 50mm uh, of side armour, and 30mm uh, of rear armour all around. And it's also got some side skirts as well, just to help cover those tracks. Um, and on these two models, we've got return rollers. Uh, just a single return roller at the front, which helps give it a sloping 
uh, sloping diagonal way towards the back of the hull because this is a free form hull um, and as you can see the belt does run all the way down the sloping hull towards the rear with the idler um, but yeah Alsfrung A as well weighs 28 tons uh, the Panther actually weighs 40 here in the game uh, and the Alsfrung C weighs 32.73 due to the extra armor the bigger engine and the side skirts um, but yeah, so that is the uh, Ausfrung C. Nothing, nothing too spectacular. Just generally better survivability and better, uh, better reliability, as it were. The gun still reloads in about seven seconds, uh, and it's still a very decent anti-tank gun. Here, yeah, go straight through the front of the Panther. We, we unfortunately didn't kill anything. But uh, if we were to do this, there you go, right through the front of it again. Uh, yeah good anti-tank gun for a, a medium war, uh, or well, mid to late war German medium. Yeah, go and get straight through the sides of uh, sides of a panther. No problem. And uh, yeah, just generally protection against bazookas and stuff from the side armor. Um, but the next major revision is taking us to late war. And late war we've got the Ausfrung E, 41.81 tons. And as you can see, a drastically changed turret. Uh, the side skirts has also been changed, but also on these late war models, uh, there is no return roller. As you can see, it goes straight to the Panther tracks um, because you know saving war materials, etc., etc. Uh, we can use that for the law. But yes, this is sort of moving into Panther 2 territory now. So we've got 110 mils of frontal armor. Uh, the same with the turret, and we've got 70 mils of side armor on both, and 40 mils of rear armor. Uh, it's also been upgraded to a long 88 mm such as is seen on the uh, King Tiger. 206 mm of penetration with this 88, um, six segments. Um, and I also changed the gun mantlet because it's no longer a Panther gun mantlet because that would have looked ridiculous on this tiny, thin, small term style turret. Um, so gunner's sight right in the middle we've got a coaxial machine gun sort of mounted diagonally downwards from the uh, from the main gun and yeah like I say it's it's a, a knockoff small term turret <laughs> uh, there's, uh, I didn't get up a picture of the small term so it's not an identical one-to-one -one copy obviously I did want it to be its own thing and we've got some relatively decent sloping on the side of the turret and of course the frontal bits of the turret are yeah, decently sloped as well for good effective armor. Yeah, 100 and I mean, it's it's all right effective armor, I suppose. But still, because it's only 70 mils, because it's side of the turret. Um, but regardless, nice, uh, nice gun sight view. And if we get up, I don't know, a French tank, for example, we can uh, yeah, set off its ammo with about an eight-second reload time. Which is not too bad, and mobility-wise, it's pretty fast. Um, here with the acceleration going over rough ground, let's see if we can't max it out. And still the same sort of top speed, 17, nearly 18 miles an hour. Which is not too bad. Run into some explosive barrels, for example. And um, the engine deck was also changed as well. It no longer has uh, no longer has four exhaust fans and now has three which is or well cooling fans I should say but the final model is the Ausfrung G which is upgraded to a 105 millimeter gun the same as what would be mounted in for example the E50 if it had ever been made uh, 224 mils of penetration with seven segments making it even longer and even more off balanced um, for these two later models the hull was also elongated but not widened, just sort of elongated for the bigger turret uh, which was made even bigger with even more sloping on the fronts and armour wise 140 mils, 80 mils of uh, lower glacis armour giving it a, an effective armour of no less than 200. Uh, same with the turret although to lesser of an angling. Uh, 85 mils of side armour on both uh, with decent sloping on the side armor there um, and that's pretty much all that was changed except for the engine which was upgraded to a 12 litre V12 so 
it also carries a lot of ammo. Over 200 rounds of 105mm of gun ammo, which is quite nice. It means you can you can sort of do anything you want. Let's get out a a not packed Puma here, and, uh, straight through the front, nice and easy. Um, and it's a bit slower. It, it does weigh 55-ish tons, which is pretty weighty. Um, it's a lot heavier than the uh, Asfrung E model. If just over 55 tons, I was right, 55.06 tons. Um, but for a late war, it would never have been made German medium tank. It's pretty good. Um, you know, armor-wise, gun-wise, still with our five-man crew. But yeah, it's it's just one of them late war German Wunderwaffers. Um, or, well, Wunderwaffe tanks, which uh, would never have been made at, at Germany state. But So this is sort of like a Panther II upgraded, <laughs> almost. Um, but yeah, so that, that is the new German line um, that I've got here. Uh, I mean, it doesn't quite have the penetration to, for example, punch through the front of a battleship turret, and the battleship can get through us if the AI manages to shoot at us like that. Um, straight, straight through the front of the hull. <laughs> uh, I do love these. I do love these Wunderwaff battleship tanks. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a big old hole. But it's 12.4 second reload time. It is a 105 mm gun, like is mounted on the late war um, cheaters. For example, if you've seen that video, that tank stuck. Um, but there are two other variants of these tanks that I have to show you, and to show to do that, I need to change factions. First of all, we're going to Britain, because we are getting up the captured um, the captured British version of this. Um, both of these captured tanks are Ausfrung A models, because that's all that I had at the time, but this is the uh, Sonderkraft 170 Ausfrung A, technically, Jackdaw. Um, if you know about the Panther, then you know about the Panther Cuckoo, which was a captured uh, captured panther taken by the Coldstream Guards, and that's what this is mimicking essentially. We've got the British emblems on the turret and hull to show that it is a British vehicle, and then we've got the American stars uh, all over it. Technically, if we were mimicking the cuckoo directly, the star should really be here because it would be because uh, it was sort of on on the side join of the panther turret. But I've decided to just. Oh, there's a wheel in the way, so I decided to just put it there instead. Um, but yeah, absolutely otherwise unchanged from the Ausfrunk A model that you saw earlier. Uh, there's an extra log on the side, for example, and uh, some extra crew stowage and two American machine guns mounted onto the roof as well for uh, anti-aircraft capabilities. Some of my German tanks would definitely have German machine guns on them if they were in the game, but they are not yet present. We don't yet have... Uh, MG34s and anti-aircraft mountings, so uh, yeah, those haven't been on there. But uh, yeah, this is the captured jackdaw. I didn't want to name it the cuckoo because, uh, well, cuckoo already exists, so uh, I've decided to just name it the jackdaw instead because, I don't know, they're attracted to shiny objects, and German tanks are quite shiny objects. So yeah, that is the jackdaw. And finally, switching faction once again to the French, um, and that's because I've got one more French tank, which is this. Uh, I've literally just named it the Captured Sonderkraft Fatsui because the Britannia Panther is literally the Panther from Britannia. So, this is just named the Captured, French Captured Tank. And uh, to do that, uh, I added some new decals into the custom game files. Um, and we've got the French 2nd Armoured um, Second Armored Division emblem, and we've also got the emblem of Free France. So, yeah, we've got some Free French, uh, free French flags on here got the uh, division emblems on here and uh, we've of course got the French roundel on the commander's cupola and also on the uh, on the gun mantlet same as the Britannia Panther for example so yeah it's in the French blue uh, and we've got an American machine gun on it once again uh, and we've got a lot of crew stowage for uh, fighting with the free French forces uh, we've got you know 
extra road wheel for example on the side of the hull and also some spare track links on the front as well uh, generally just giving it a little bit of survivability so yeah this is just the uh, another captured Ausfunk A if I had a Polish faction for example I would make one similar to the Poodle but I do not yet have a Polish faction um, but yeah so that is, uh, that is it for the new German tank line that I have um, you know, let's get up for example a Model 1 anti-tank turn our turret and, and shoot at that for example Nice and easy. Nice and easy taking out a uh, French tank. Um, but yeah, so that is the new German tank line. Like I said, um, if you do have a, a name that I could use for this tank line which isn't used already by a, a German tank line from the war, then uh, please suggest it and I'll see if I like any of them that uh, you come up with. But yeah, so that is the Not Panthers. I'll uh, thank you for watching and goodbye.